Morning. The weather has just turned crazy here. It's been sunny and I've, wearing, I've been wearing shorts for days and then all of a sudden this morning it's snowing. It's just typical Scotland. Anyways, I thought that I wanted to make a video on birdsong and basically trying to identify birds by their song. So I was thinking now that while a lot of people are still stuck in isolation, uh, it can be a good idea to, to acquire some new skills or maybe brushing up with some old ones if you've ever attempted to identify birds by song before. Some of the great things about bird song is that it can really, you know, it can really deepen that appreciation for nature in the first place. I mean, I still remember the first time I was driving on a sunny spring morning and I heard I could identify the bird just singing out of the window of my car, just driving past. It's a crazy experience that still sits with me. And I think it's just a great, a great thing to be able to do, especially if you're into wildlife photography like me, then it can really help you find those birds in the first place and find those birds that you're looking for that you want to photograph and it can even help you um, learn behaviors um, learn behaviors and predict behaviors at first i'm going to go through five tips that you can use um, that i think are really good if you want to start to try and learn bird song and these can be used if you're anywhere in the world uh, not just here in the uk or europe where i am and on the birds that are around here so number one is try and find the bird when you hear it singing. Whenever you, whenever you hear a bird's song, try and actually find the bird, and good idea to have a pair of binoculars with you. I can really recommend the ones that I have here. It's the Viking ED um, 8x42. Uh, I've had these for, I don't know, seven years now maybe. Uh, and right now they're about a quarter of the price of what I bought them for. So very good pair of binoculars. Once you hear that bird song and you don't know what it is, spending the time to trying to find the bird will actually, you know, it will imprint that song on you just by listening to it over and over again. Sometimes it can even be quite frustrating. You're trying to find it where you can't, but when you eventually do, uh, there's a very good chance that you're going to remember that um, more than if you just listened to the song and uh, kept walking. Now, tip number two, I think it's a good idea to learn the common birds first. Learn what you're going to be seeing or listening to every day, stuff that's around your garden, uh, stuff that you hear when you go for a walk, um, and especially here in the UK, you know, like the robin and chaffinch, these kind of birds. They're just birds you can encounter every day. Um, so learning those first, learning the common ones first, and maybe learning some of the simpler ones first. Um, Chiff Chaff is a great one, which just calls his name Chiff Chaff uh, every, time, every time it sings. When you have those common ones down and you hear something new, you actually know there's something new and you know that you need to kind of learn that one. So it's a good idea to start just learning those common ones and then kind of building on from there. Now, another great thing is to learn or create some mnemonics. And that's just ways to help you remember um, to help you remember the songs. I'm going to give some examples of this later on in the video and I'm going to go through some examples of the species that we have here in the UK. But some easy ones here is like if you hear that yellow hammer you often hear the little bit of bread but no cheese kind of thing. So it's, like, it's a way to kind of remember the songs. But I'll go through some later in the video. Another great way to try and learn these bird songs is by using some um, apps or audio audiobooks, anything like that. I can really recommend uh, Zeno Canto. I'll put a link in the description below. That's basically worldwide and will give you any song and call um, from anywhere in the world of pretty much any species because it's, it's an open source. Everybody just contributes to it. So that's a great one to, to learn some songs from. Other than that, I use the Collins Bird Guide app, which is the app adaptation of the book, which is basically it's like the Bible of bird identification in Europe. So it's really good to have because you just keep it in your pocket all the time. So it's a way to identify birds that you're unsure of. And it has quite a few of the songs and call species as well. So it's a great one to use. Um, other than that, there's a great one. Um, there's a great audio book that I recommend you get. If you're in the UK or Europe, uh, called Tweet of the Day. So it's more about just of a, a listening to in the background. Starts off with uh, the song of a bird and then it goes into interesting facts and behaviors of that species. This is a great one to learn a lot more about birds and try and get that song in as well. And if you haven't gotten Audible already, you can get that book free. I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. And finally, I think just always be 
birding. Always be listening out for songs. Always be looking out for the birds that are around. They're one of the most common animals in the world and they're found on every continent. And they're in big cities. They adapt to us humans. They kind of live around us everywhere. So wherever you go, there's always something to watch or listen out for. So those are the things that I think it's really good to kind of remember, keep in mind when you're starting to learn some bird songs. Now, I'm gonna quickly go into a few common ones that we have here in the UK and maybe some tips for helping to remember their songs. So one of the first ones I wanna talk about is the wren. It is a tiny little bird. I've got that tail up in the back. Uh, but being so small, it is actually one of the loudest birds and is often the one that keeps you up in the morning, like four in the morning, especially if you're camping and just listening out your window, then that's the bird that's going to keep you up. One of the things that I was taught in the beginning to remember that song was that um, listening out for this kind of rattle that it has. It has this like kind of... A little bit into the song so if you listen to it here now you'll hear that it's got a lot of stuff going on that i i don't always remember that especially in the beginning um it's hard to actually get a feel for the quality of the song but that kind of stuff comes with time but I, for the run i would just listen out for that rattle um and then you kind of know that okay that's it Another good thing about that bird is it's often low down. So whenever you hear it, you can kind of look down on shrubs or lower kind of stumps and things like that. That's often where you'll find it. For the second bird, one of the most common ones we get here in the UK and throughout Europe is the European robin. The European, because in America you'll have another one, you'll have the American robin, so it looks very different. This one actually has like more of an orangey kind of breast on it. Everybody here in the UK will be familiar with the robin and it's kind of has a bit of a it's, it's kind of described as a bit of a jazzy uh, jazzy bird because it doesn't really repeat itself it just kind of goes off on different kind of songs every time very very varied song i really struggled a lot with the robin in the beginning because of that because it didn't repeat itself i didn't find that there was anything um anything that just that i could cling on to to get it Until one day, I realized that it reminded me of Tinkerbell from Hook. In the movie Hook with Robin Williams, uh, Julia Roberts would come in as Tinkerbell. And whenever she did, there was this kind of chime or some of that sound. Um, and that just reminds me of the Robin. Now, it's been years ago since I've seen this movie. So if it actually sounds the same, I don't even know anymore. But the thing is that it works for me. So creating your own kind of associations like that can be a great way of learning to just remember that song. Okay, on to the next bird, uh, the goldfinch. A goldfinch is a really nice looking bird and you can often attract it to gardens by putting up niger seeds. And this one here is uh, another one of those I've created for myself that works for me, might not work for you. Uh, but the goldfinch always reminds me of uh, the Porky the Pig in Looney Tunes. Whenever that Looney Tunes kind of cartoon ends, Porky would stick his head out and he would kind of go... Back home, huh? So that, that just sounds like the goldfinch to me. And that just, like the goldfinch just sounds like it's stubbed that kind of stutters like Porky there, and then it kind of finishes. Um, so that's always helped for me, and if you find it useful, great, use it. If not, you know, come up with your own, or, you know, come up with something that, that helps you remember it, because that's what's important. Uh, one of the simpler ones is uh, the great tit. Uh, it's, a, it's a very loud bird, and you can often hear it. This is quite a common one. I think everybody learns it this way, that it sounds like it says, that it sounds like it says, teacher, teacher. And that really just helps. Like when, whenever birds are simple like that, they're actually quite easy to learn. So that could be a good one to learn right away. 
And another one that's good to learn right away, the final bird I'm going to go through here is this song thrush. Now, if you listen out for the song thrush, it's also quite a loud, uh, loud singing bird, and it repeats itself three times. But the thing is, it doesn't really know how to count, so it often gets it wrong. Sometimes it'll do two times, sometimes four times, but usually repeats itself three times, and then it varies um, its song a little bit. Repeats that three times, and then it varies a little bit again, and then maybe it goes back to the beginning, you know. It, but just keeping that in mind, usually it repeats itself three times, and that should really help you along the way. Anyways, I hope that was useful, and I hope you can find this time now that you have more time in your hand uh, maybe you're stuck in isolation, maybe you have some birds in the garden that you can start learning. Even in the middle of a city, you might hear the swift screaming as they fly above, gulls or crows. Or on, when you're out and you walk and you can try and pick up some songs that way. Now, I've also written a blog post on this, so you can check that out. And I have five more birds on there and a bit more help to describe kind of how they sing. So you can check that out on my website. I'll put the link above somewhere and the description below. And then I'll leave you guys with uh, some more of my favorites of the people who have been using the hashtag shot from home. So enjoy that and I'll see you in the next video.